It used to be that if you wanted a cheap computer, you could just buy an old Core 2 Duo laptop and stick a modern SSD in it. However, these laptops have been aging for many years now, with many having components more than 14 years old. This means that they might not be viable for a modern workflow and could be too slow for even browsing. Today, we will be seeing whether an old Core 2 Duo laptop is still a viable option in 2022 if you want to purchase a cheap work computer. So, hopping on eBay, I tried to find the cheapest computer that was in decent condition and had an operating system installed. I'm a big simp for Dell, so I ended up going with this Dell Latitude E5500. For a bit of background, the laptop has a 15.5 inch 720p screen and usually ships with 2-4GB of RAM. This model here has 2GB, which seems a bit low, but that might prove to be fine later on. The real problem with this laptop, however, is the 320GB hard drive, which will slow the system down, and the Pentium 900, as this is a single core processor which will also be very slow. To further upgrade the laptop, I decided to buy a 250GB SSD, which should dramatically increase the system performance. So, this may have been a horrible mistake going with this drive, because a lot of people are complaining that it failed on them relatively early. Um, so, considering that those things store all your files, that, that'd be really bad. Um, someone also said that there's caught on fire or something. Um, so... You know what, it, it's probably fine. Um, it, it was only, you know, $27 anyway, so I, I guess you can't really complain. With the purchase of my somewhat sketchy drive completed, I moved on to purchasing a better CPU. I bought the Core 2 Duo P8600 for around 6 bucks, which should further increase the speed at which it can do tasks, like web browsing and running applications. After all this was ordered, the total came to around $100. Everything arrived within a week, and I first started by unboxing the laptop. It came in a nice layer of bubble wrap, which hopefully protected it well in the long voyage from my cellar. There's of media ports here. Let me just bring the light over a bit closer. Um, it has... I think that might be serial. That's definitely a monitor. I think that's a VGA. That's Ethernet. Um, no modem. Um, it has these two USB ports and S video out, and then it has an express card slot here that you can use if you want. That's what it, where the charging brick would go. There's some other USB ports, microphone, headphone, firewire. Um, has a disk drive, which is nice. Um, it's also cool on these laptops is they won't come open. You have to push them in. That was good. Oh, it has an SD card reader and a manual toggle here for the um, Wi-Fi. And then on the bottom, um, that's the battery. I'm not sure. If this battery is good, I bought another battery because um, I'm figuring that this one doesn't hold a charge very well anymore. With that settled, I got to work unboxing the charger, and setting it up was quite simple. From there, I wanted to power on the computer to make sure it came with all the specifications described. Everything ran very slowly due to the hard disk, but when I finally booted into Windows, I confirmed that it had the same processor, memory, and storage listed. From there, I powered it off and began disassembly. Luckily, Dell's older laptops are quite serviceable, and so opening up the back cover only required loosening one screw. From there, I had access to the memory, storage, and CPU. I first decided to swap out the storage, as it was in theory the simpler of the two. However, this sadly was not the case, as the owner thought it was a good idea to try and use double-sided tape to keep the HDD mounted. Eventually, I was able to remove it after using three screwdrivers to pry it out of its stubborn position. Sadly, I had to resort to using tape to anchor the new drive, but this time I put it in a bit more of a convenient spot for removal. Next, I decided to replace the CPU. To do that, five screws must be removed to take off the heat assembly. From there, I cleaned off the heat assembly and removed traces of thermal paste from it. Then, I removed the Celeron using a screwdriver to loosen the socket. From there, I inserted the new CPU, which I when I had a moment of panic after realizing I put it in the wrong way. Luckily, none of the pins ended up getting bent, and when I reseated it in its proper orientation, everything seemed fine. After that, I added thermal paste to the CPU. Hopefully this is still good. If it's not, I'm in a very bad state. Hmm. Please be good. Oh. Like that's still fresh. Ooh, might have been a bit too much. Whoa, that was a little too much. Then I inserted the heating assembly and tightened the screws down to hold it in place. 
I put the cover back on and powered on the laptop, hoping I hadn't broken anything. It seems as if I'd lucked out, as my shoddy repairman skills had not cost me the life of this little laptop. So from here, I gave the laptop a good clean down. The laptop was honestly super dirty, so wiping it down with a damp paper towel was super satisfying. To that point, when buying an old laptop, expect it to be reasonably dirty as these machines have often been used for decades without a proper clean. With the now almost new looking laptop, I moved on to installing the operating system. After flashing Windows 10 to a USB drive, I inserted it into the laptop. The installation went by surprisingly quickly, only taking around 10 to 15 minutes. From there, I started installing a few basic work applications. The laptop was pretty snappy, and generally doing basic tasks with it was fine. Once everything was installed, I decided to try and do some browsing on it. This went pretty well, and web pages generally loaded under a second. Even on some of the heavier pages like Amazon, it did fine at displaying them. Then, I moved on to a few applications like Word, Excel, Docs, and Slides. The laptop had no trouble running these, and it was even possible to multitask with several applications open at once. I was a little worried about the low RAM of the laptop, but it never reached more than 80% utilization. Writing massive essays with the keyboard felt fine, as the keys were firm but not too painful to type on. While the screen is 720p, it was still decently sharp and had good colors. Then, I fired up YouTube to try some video playback. 720p resolution worked just fine, however cranking it up to 1080p resulted in some stutters. However, since the screen is only 720p, you shouldn't need to turn up the resolution beyond that anyway. The speakers sounded decent, but they were a little tinny and flat sounding, so it might be better to hook up some external speakers if you plan to make this your primary setup. Finally, it was time to try the mega boss of all applications, Creative Cloud. Installing this took several hours, and most Adobe applications were incompatible Bruh. with the computer due to missing CPU instruction sets. I was able to get Photoshop and Premiere Pro to run by modifying some libraries inside to give more support for the now decade-old processor. But just because things can run doesn't mean they should. Playback in Premiere was stuttery to the point that editing on it was a nightmare, and Photoshop was also extremely slow. I didn't bother installing anything else from Adobe, as I'm pretty sure you'd get the same results. When it comes to gaming, this computer really sucks, so you shouldn't be buying one of these if gaming is your primary intent. Because the integrated graphics are DirectX 10 limited, most games won't even launch, and those that do perform very badly. The most you could play on this laptop would be games from over a decade ago, but even those run poorly like Counter-Strike Source, which is a game from 2004, which had an average of around 30 to 40 FPS. It's ironic because I have a Pentium laptop from 2004 that can run the game twice as well, but I wouldn't recommend that laptop to anyone. Though in the future, I might throw in an SSD and make a video about it. While this laptop isn't exactly a powerhouse, I would say that I was still presently surprised by how well things ran on it. The screen was bright and the keyboard felt relatively nice, and the trackpad was okay, though I would recommend buying a mouse due to the small size and lack of multi-gesture support. The only things that I would complain about this machine are the Wi-Fi card, which had slow speeds and was sometimes unreliable, and the battery life, which lasted around 2 hours, which for most people might be problematic. However, even with its flaws, these machines are still very usable in 2022, and if found for a good price, are a good buy for someone who doesn't need a powerful machine and just wants to do basic work. So if you are a student or someone with not a lot of money to expend, and you want a computer for cheap, pick one of these up, and it will serve as a nice, reliable machine for years to come. As long as you don't put a sketchy PNY SSD in it.